Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Again, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, we are glad, and we are truly happy that the Lord is on our side, has never left us. No, seconds. this is our Reverend Johnson coming on this morning as uh, we have committed to uh, doing that which the Lord has given us to do. We thank God for life, health, and strength that we have in our bodies on today. We pray in the name of Jesus as we move forward and share just a quick word with you. We pray that you will be blessed in the name of Jesus. That's why we pray that the anointing of the living God will fall fresh down upon us this day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, amen, and we will be glad in it regardless of what may come. God is a keeper. We thank God for you today. We thank God for you uh, tuning in and joining in with us as we seek the Lord and seek Him with all of our hearts, our minds, bodies, and soul. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get into the Word of God this morning. And we want you to just, we want you to be challenged in, in this area about don't turn back. Because the enemy's trying to get a lot of people to turn back to some things that the Lord has delivered or delivered us from. And we want to make sure that we stay the course so that way we don't miss out on what the Lord is doing for us. Amen. So with that being said, let us render a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for yet another day that you have made. And God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you, God, for the mobilities of our hands, our feet our minds, God, that are regulating great thoughts in you, God. Father, we we come before you, God, humbly this morning, Father God, thanking you, God, for one more day, one more chance, God, to take a breath of life and to breathe out once again. God, we thank you for your tender mercy that you have shown toward us. Father, we pray that you would word our mouths on today, God. Give us what to say and how to say, God, that you will be glorified and that what you've given us to do, God, during this season, this time in our lives, God, that you, God, would receive all praise. God, you said that if we would lift you up, you said you would draw all men. God, we want to lift you up, God, by the reading of your word, God, and the discussions that we're going to have on today. You be glorified in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. So without further ado, we're going to go straight into our uh, subject topic again. Don't turn back. In Luke chapter 9, verse 62, Jesus said to his disciples, he was saying he, he, was, he was in the midst of doing what he does best, and that's being God in the flesh. He, somebody asked him a question, and Jesus' response was, and Jesus said unto him in this particular passage in Luke 9, 62, and Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. We have to forgive and release and let even some people, places, and things go. And you ask me, why, why is this so important today? Scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. And it also says in Proverbs 13, 20, that he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Interesting, isn't it? When we are, when we are asked to follow in the footsteps of Christ, when our, our pastors, our preachers, our leaders are, are telling us this, we will be challenged to leave what we know behind. It's imperative that we understand that the scripture said, in Matthew 16, 24, again, Jesus said, Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We have to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is our charge. We have to do that which the Lord has given us to do. Even the apostle Paul, one of the greatest leaders Learn to submit to the power of God. In 1 Corinthians 11, 1 and 2, he also said, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Amen. And the only way that's going to happen is if you are following 
your leader, first of all, following the unction of the Holy Ghost, hearing his voice when he says, my sheep follow me, a stranger's voice they will not follow. As a person highly regarded, Paul, he was feared, but yet he even himself had to humble himself and pick up his cross and follow Jesus. You know that game that we used to play when we were younger, follow the leader? It's not a game. This is real. This is really real. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Your life should be in that same category where the Lord should be leading you in your life. When, 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 when we have been called, we, we've been called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example so that we might follow in his footsteps. Amen. Being followers of Jesus is to put him at the center and to make him the supreme ruler. Hallelujah. Of all that we are and all that we do. This is to allow him to lead us by his precious spirit out into this, 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 this untamed world and as an agent to, tr to transform or, or an agent of transformation in the lives of, of others. Amen. So we have to, we have to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Jesus gave us the keys to following him by giving it to his disciples first. And we can find that in Matthew 28 verses 18 through 20. If you would uh, follow me, um, get your Bibles out in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And it reads as follows, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. If ye therefore, he said, Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the ends of the world. Amen. That means that he's always going to be with you. He promised us that he would never leave us nor forsake us. To follow Christ right now means that every area of our lives have to be submitted to him as we surrender every part of ourselves. That's why I always say, I, 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 I beg you by the mercies of God that you submit your bodies as a, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, accessible unto God, for this is our reasonable service. And we're always instructed, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that good and perfect will of God. Amen. We, we are cleansed of unrighteousness, and he is able to rule and reign in our lives if we would just submit to him, making us vessels of acceptable use for the kingdom of God. Amen. This is, this is getting good. We should not have any kind of desire to turn or look back with any, with, 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 from that form of stuff. Uh, it, it, nothing back there, all the way back there or even right on me can cause me to want to turn back after God has been so good, after he's proven himself to be mighty and strong. Scripture tells us in Philippians 3, 13 and 14, brethren, I count it not, I count not myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Follow me now. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. So if anyone is cleansed from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as a holy, set apart for, for the use of God, for the building of the kingdom of God. Amen. So we can't do anything of ourselves to get ourselves into heaven, but one way. Let's look at some of the necessary steps that we're, we're given to get to heaven, we have to first accept God's love. And, and, and scripture tells us, and this was manifested, the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son, who was that Jesus Christ, into the world that we might live through him and through him alone. Here's another one. We have to confess and repent. We have to confess to the Lord that we are a sinner, unsaved. 
and repent and turn from our wicked ways. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In John, 1 John 1 and 9, it's important that we understand that when God calls us into something, we have to do what we've been commissioned to do. God is a great God. He is an awesome God. He is a mighty God. He is a strong God. He's an everlasting God. He's an understanding God. And if we don't know anything right now, we need our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. So now let's look at some of the benefits of following Jesus. Amen. Let's, let's look at some of these things. I can give you just a, a just just a small hint. Like for instance, you'll feel the weight of sin and shame lifted off of you when you surrender your life to Christ. In Romans 8 and 2, it says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And then let's just number two say, so like you, 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 you'll sense the power of sin is broken. Therefore, there now there is no more condemnation to those that are in in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Bible declares that sin was taken care of through the finished work of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Just a glance at what the scripture declares, revealing the truth. The power of sin was broken. Jesus broke it. And number three, God is with you, and He always re assures us that he's with us. He's given us a reassurance. In Isaiah 41 10, it says, fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed for I am thy God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. We serve an awesome God. An awesome God. And he also, he also, when when we're walking up right before the Lord, he 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 sometimes restores family relationships, other broken relationships according to his will, amen. But it has to be according to his will. Some things we want, the Lord doesn't want us to have in our future. That's why we have to leave those things back there. In Joel 2, 25, it says, And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. There is so much more that the Lord would have for us if we would just follow him and stop trying to look back like the children of Israel when they were walking on dry ground. When Moses split the sea, he was obedient by spreading waving, hitting, and the sea came up on both sides. And they were, the wind was blowing and the, dry, the ground was dry. They walked through, check this out now, check this out. They walked through on dry ground, got midway, and they heard a noise in the background. They turned. This is where we always mess up. They turned to see what was going on. And immediately they became fearful. They became fearful. Fearful. Hey, man, they became fearful. They forgot just that quick that God had brought them out of Egypt and he was taking them to a place of refuge, a place that was promised to them. This is why we have to understand that when the Lord promises you something, he gives you something, you have it. You can obtain it. All you have to do is believe. Do you believe? There, there's just so much more. Let us continue to pursue righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost as we follow after Christ. If we keep our minds stayed on him, he'll keep us in perfect peace. He'll give us the things that the world can give us. Trusting in the Lord and not leaning to our own understanding, we can do all things through Christ who is our strength. We don't, we don't want that kind of example that Lot's wife gave because she had to look back. Sin produces ungodly desires. And if you stay around something too long, you'll find yourself doing just like this. Glancing back at some things. Before you know it, you know, picked up a habit that, that the Lord delivered you from. You know, picked up a saying that the Lord took out your mouth. You know, picked up 
looking at certain things that you didn't look used to look at because you you got yourself to a point to where you 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 you, you tamed yourself. You got you, you cleared your 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 sight and you started you found your focus in Christ. But somewhere along the line, somebody snatched you back with some slick words. We keep looking back. If we keep looking back. Something might be sitting right in front of you that's going to trip you up. That's what the enemy has set that thing up for, to trip you up so that way he can cause you to fall off. It'll cost you more by looking back if you would just allow the Lord to be your everything. Amen. Just allow God to be your all in all. Amen. So let's not look back. Let's stay forward for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So we, we can't we can't we can't keep looking back. Romans 6, 23 tells us that don't look back. You keep looking back. You're going to fall off. You're going to fall off bad. So we have to understand that with God, all things are possible. We can be held. We can be strengthened if we would just trust him with everything that we have. Don't be like the dog, as scripture says it in in, in, in Proverbs 26, 11, as a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool returns to his folly. Leave those former things behind. Stop trying to pull what you were doing at church or even at home into your new right now. God is trying to do something now. He wants to behold all things become new. He wants to do something new in our lives right now. It's new to us, but not new to him. He's trying to enlarge our territories, but for whatever reason, we keep trying to hold on. We keep trying to look back. Hold on to God's unchanging hand, people. Let's seek after the Lord with all, with, with everything that we have. It's, it's never too late. It's never too late to come back to the Lord. It's never too late to get right with the Lord. If you walked away and you want to get back, get right with the Lord, all you have to do is just ask the Lord to forgive you. Repent. Just repent. Repent and turn. Just turn. Do a complete turn, not a partial turn, to where you're looking back and you're taking some of that old stuff to bring to your now. Return to the Lord. Harden not your heart. Let the Lord lead you and guide you by his precious spirit. If you love him, you really love him, you're going to do whatever's necessary to let the Lord be the guide of your life. We do this every, every day just about. If our minds aren't stayed on him, we're troubled. We see what's going on with the schools. We see what's going on out in the street. We see what's going on with the court system. We have to be mindful today, people of God, that we are living in the last and evil days and the Lord is soon to return. Come join us today at the Healing House Worship Center. We believe that our pastor is going to be giving a, a great word, a great word, a life-changing word. Pastor White of the Healing House Worship Center, located here in um, Urbana, Illinois, the Lincoln Square Mall in the lower level. We, uh, we start promptly at 12 o'clock. We, we are a timely ministry. We love the Lord and we do whatever we can to make him happy. It's all about him. You find healing. It's, always, it's not always about just physical healing, but there's spiritual healing. Some people are being troubled in their spirit. Some people are being troubled in their minds, their hearts. But we know that if you would just seek the Lord and allow him to be who he is, as the creator of all things, even yourself, if you've embraced him as your Lord and Savior, you can have, it, have that today. Join us at 12 o'clock noon. Join us. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. Again, this is uh, RTL Outreach Ministries, uh, Reverend Mike Johnson. Uh, this is what the Lord has given me to do in the season of my life. We've been pushing ever since uh, 2017 to encourage the people of God. When somebody pulls you out, you have a responsibility to go and help somebody out. You have that responsibility. So you're challenged today like everybody else. Be still. Ask the Lord to give you ears to hear what he's saying today. That you can receive those new pair of shoes that you need.
so that way you can walk as Christ walked. You can talk as he talked. You can say the things that he said. You can speak with power and authority and things around you will change. We love you. God bless you in the name of Jesus. We'll see you again soon. God bless you. Amen.